welcome to the Investor's Corner here in the Sky Lounge. I'm your host, Nick Arna, and I wanted to take our channel that we're building here. You know, this is all about creating new content. We're going in many different directions, no direction at all, but every direction at the same time. So, what I want to do, for my own benefit and for, for my, my vast amount of very loyal followers, I want to see if I can learn how Warren Buffett invests, and I want to see if I can teach that to you. So every time you see a red bow tie, you know it's time to talk about investing. Warren Buffett. He is worth $85 billion. He owns the largest company traded on the New York Stock ex Exchange. And all they do is buy up different companies and properties that generate cash. He so, so, Warren Buffett has four rules to investing. The first one is invest with companies that have vigilant leaders. They are still generating growth. They are still being profitable. They're still having cash come in. You don't want to see a company that goes from crisis to crisis. Steady increase in... Uh, earnings per share. Rule number two, they, they got to be viable in the future for long-term growth. So for a lot of investors, they want to look and make sure that a company's been around for eight or ten years or longer. Rule number three is you have to understand the business. You know, why are you getting into something if you don't understand it? And so that's, uh, that's, that's an important one. And uh, not, not only do you need to understand the business, you need to understand the industry as well. So for me, the energy sector might be something that I want to specialize in because I'm having to become familiar with oil companies and so there's a lot that goes into getting oil out of the ground and getting it to the fuel pumps or into your house. So not only do we have pipelines, but we've got transportation, we've got refineries, we've got the actual machinery that gets the oil out of the ground and then on top of that you've got, you know, who supplies the fuel pumps and, you know, there's so much that goes into it and somebody is producing those things and hopefully uh, you can find a, a company and this, this leads right into rule number four. You want to find a company that's trading below its intrinsic value. And so that's, I think, what I'm going to try to, to discuss and try to explain over the next few weeks. What we want to do is find the intrinsic value of each company. And so to do that, we're going to look at a couple things. We're going to look at the trailing 12-month earning per share. We're going to look at the growth rate. And then two times the growth rate is usually the P-E ratio, the price per equity ratio. And then uh, the last thing is that we're going to want to see if we can extend an earnings per share uh, 10 years into the future. And when we get all those things, we should be able to predict what the stock price should be over the next 10 years. And we also want to have a minimum acceptable rate of return. And so the minimum should be 15%. What Buffett shoots for is 26% or 21%. And so Warren Buffett, on the other hand, has averaged 21% gains year to year to year. And so the new modern portfolio theory, which was originated in academia, just like Keynesian economics, just like Marxism, these things that originate in academia don't hold up in the real world. And so modern portfolio theory says the market is rational, the market will find fair value, everything's priced at fair value, and the market, um, that, that you'll never be able to beat the market. And so this is the strategy that these giant fund managers follow because, you know, when you give your money to somebody, you're expecting returns. And so the easiest way to do that, you know, if we've got the Federal Reserve propping up the market, you know, flooding the system with dollars, uh, you know, just put money in something that follows the major indices and you're going to get 7 to 12% returns every year. But Warren Buffett obviously thinks those guys are incompetent and thinks that they're losers. And so we are going to try to find a way to invest like Warren Buffett. And one of the things he says is you never need to invest in more than 20 companies in your entire lifetime. And, uh, you know, I, I think everything that he's done speaks for itself. He invested in Coca-Cola, and now he gets millions of dollars in dividends from Coca-Cola because of how much he's invested in them over the course of, uh, at this point, 20 years, over 20 years. So, almost 30 years. Um, but, the, but the key is you have to find a stock a good stock, a good company that's got the four things and that's trading beneath its true value. And then you want to jump in. And you also want to make sure it pays a dividend. And so, of course, I'm reading on Reddit, and Reddit is just, it's full of people that don't, they don't know what they're doing. So when the market was being flooded with all these extra dollars by the Federal Reserve, by the Obama administration, that then led into the Trump administration that for the first year of Trump's presidency, the market kept going up and up and up. And it's still, it's still up. The Dow Jones is still at 25,000 points which that's been nine, nine or 10 years of consistent growth without a market correction, which has never been seen but once before. So why I think this is important to do is because a lot of the economists think the market is going to have a big correction because how can it not? Because how can it not? Because the, the Federal Reserve has been flooding the system with dollars and it's overvalued all of these stocks. And then with the tax cuts, these companies, these, these publicly traded companies bought back their own stock, which is good if you're an investor and you find a stock that's undervalued. But if all these are already overvalued, it just pumps it up even more. We're going to look at the debt to equity rate. We're going to look at the cash in, cash out rate. And we're going to look at our minimum acceptable uh, rate of return. And uh, hopefully, if we see all these things, and hopefully they all, they all line up, and then when we compare them to other companies in the same industry, we're going to try to find the thing, the X factor that sets them apart. The reason that Chipotle was worth $200 
and now it's worth three hundred dollars. The, the thing that keeps Coca Cola around, you know, what makes an, what makes a company durable? What do they have? Is it the management? Is it the product? Is it both? So those are going to be the hard things to find. Anyway. Hey, um... Yep. So uh, every time you see the bow tie, you'll know it's time to make some money. Good morning.